and amen and amen, amen and amen and amen. And my brothers was so on point, you know. Um, I apologize for being just a little bit late. I was just finishing off a phone call and I couldn't just cut him off at that point in time. But my brother, what I was listening to is so in tune to what we're going to be speaking about right here, right now in Revelations 19. The true purpose of prophecy is to bear testimony towards the person and the work of our Lord Jesus Christ. This is what we're discussing right now in Revelations 19. Our true, the true purpose is to testify, testifying the word of God, testifying the truth, as my brother said. Many people are telling a lot of lies. They're not even prophesying the truth they're they're out for their own benefit their own game their apostasy and it's rife right now because of the money of course hallelujah we know that there's a lot of money to be earned in ministry if you get a big ministry if you get a big following fleecing people and for whatever it is you know what i mean even right now you know um there's money in churches the church of Ring the church of england is the richest one of the richest churches that there is right now let's have it right um so <laughs> it, so some people are there for the wrong reasons. That's the truth of the matter, right? So the Catholic Church, probably another another church, one of the richest establishments all around the world, right? So, and you think about it, you've got these two establishments have been kind of like, you know, going for years, years and years and years and years and years. And years. So people are thinking, why? Well, let's spin off the back of that. You know, I, I'm, you know, let's have a bit of fire. Let's let's open up a, a business. Yeah, not a yeah. ministry, not a, not a, not a chariot, a business, and that's how some people are, teach, are treating God's word as a business. It's a business mechanism, and yeah. you know we have to be careful, but we also have to also be in a position where we have that spirit of discernment, where we can discern the truth, and if we have discerned the truth, you know that we're in a position to work out our own salvation with trembling and fear and to be in a position where we are uh, able to receive where the truth is. Amen. Amen. You know, that's very important because there's, there's, there's one thing, but there's also another angle to that, you know, in terms of placement, sometimes we have to go through um, a, 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 a place where you know God is producing perseverance and patience within our character. So it, it's all well and good. We might see no, there's no there's no perfect church. So we need to understand that there is no perfect church. So if, if we're going looking for a perfect church, we're going to be severely disappointed. Number one, because we're all flawed, flawed human beings. Number one, and we all fall short of the glory of God. Even pastors, Christians, you know what I mean, fall short of the glory of God. So if we're looking for this perfect church, we are going to be in a in a place where we're going to be severely disappointed. But how can we make a difference? How can we shine our light in dark places, even in the church? Hallelujah. That's what God wants us to do. And he has a plan and purpose for each and every single one of you. So Nadia, would you like to kick off tonight with um, Revelation 19 verses 1 to 10? And uh, let's get moving. After this, I heard what seemed to be the loud voice of a great multitude in heaven crying out, Hallelujah, salvation and glory and power belong to our God. His judgments are true and just, for he has judged the great prostitute who corrupted the earth with her immorality and has avenged on the, her the blood of his servants. Once more they cried out, Hallelujah, the smoke from her goes up forever and ever. And the 24 elders and the four living creatures fell down and worshipped God who was seated on the throne, saying, Amen. Hallelujah. And from the throne came a voice saying, praise our God, all you his servants, you who fear him, small and great. Then I heard what seemed to be the voice of a great multitude, like the roar of many waters and like the sound of mighty peals of thunder crying out. Hallelujah. For the Lord our God, the almighty reigns. Let us rejoice and exult and give him glory for the marriage of the lamb has come and his bride has made herself ready. 
It was granted her to clothe herself with fine linen, bright and pure. Do I carry on? Yeah, yeah, one, yeah carry on just one more, uh, one more first there. To nine. Nine. No, no, go to ten. Okay. For the fine linen is the righteous deeds of the saints. And the angel said to me, write this, blessed are those who were invited to the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he said to me, these are the true words of God. Then I fell down at his feet to worship him. But he said to me, you must not do that. I am a fellow servant with you and your brothers who hold to the testimony of Jesus. Worship God for the testimony of Jesus. Is a prophecy. Amen. Very powerful stuff. We should be rejoicing. Hallelujah. Just like John. Rejoicing in heaven over Babylon's fall because we know it's coming. We also know that Jesus is coming. You see, John next hears the sound of that great multitude in heaven praising God for the righteous punishment of the falling of Babylon. Babylon is going to fall. Hallelujah. It talks about the great white hall, which we discuss, and the 24 elders and the four cherubim worshipping God and justifying him for what he has done. Hallelujah. And a voice from the throne calls on God. It calls on God's servants to praise him. God is calling on us right now to be praising him in this time for what is to come. We are seeing lots of evil. We are seeing lots of misdemeanors. We are seeing a lot of untruths. We are seeing a lot of darkness. But you know what? God doesn't want us to be weeping and moaning or in that place. of. He wants us to be praising because Jesus is coming. Hallelujah. He's coming to take the throne. He's coming to, 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 to bring this to an end. Hallelujah. This suffering, this pain, you know, and, 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 and it's something that we need to be ecstatic about. You know, this is quite, a, you, know, you know, quite a gory passage. But you know what? It's going to come to an end. Jesus is coming. That is the hope. That is the truth. That is what we need to express. Hallelujah. In the description, it talks about the total destruction that Babylon has come. It says, rejoice over the heaven. Rejoice over the saints, the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, all those, all the work and the ministry. The fivefold ministry we need to be rejoicing at those that are doing the work of the ministry. Yes, rejoicing hallelujah. at those that are going out there you know, um, picking up their cross and walking, getting ecstatic, you know, against all odds. We need to be rejoicing, not worrying about those who ain't doing or those that are corrupt. We need to be going out there preaching the truth. Yeah, hallelujah. Yeah, hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Getting Come excited on. about Jesus is coming. He's coming. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And it's, and it's good news. And this is the good news. Hallelujah. That he's coming again. Hallelujah. He's coming again. You know, we can read about the Old Testament and see that he comes to save and give us salvation. But he's coming again for those that are lost, for those that are perishing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Isn't that something to get excited about? Because I know. Hallelujah. He's coming in my heart. Hallelujah. That's what they're saying. Hallelujah. God has given judgment for you against her. It talks about that. And here we see the rejoicing which was called for it begins with a shout that vast multitude that we have already come upon you know two vast multitudes in heaven already the martyrs in seven the angels in five and here is most likely the multitude of the angels first we see the praise hallelujah that this shout of the rejoicing begins with hallelujah hallelujah <laughs> very common word in religious vocabulary if you're not shouting hallelujah when you're in church on a sunday if you're not shouting hallelujah right now hallelujah i i command you hallelujah to be going out to singing hallelujah hallelujah praising god i remember when i remember when my wife met me um they, they, the girl 
girls, the girls used to say, what are you doing hanging around with him, man? He goes around saying hallelujah, preaching the gospel like a lunatic in the streets of Luton. Radical. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> hallelujah. You know I mean, that's who he is. He, 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 you sure he's all right? Do you know what I mean? Hallelujah. <laughs> Oh dear! And but we got to look at the only the only time it appears in scripture is on the four occasions in this chapter. Like Hosanna, it's one of the few Hebrew words which have established themselves in ordinary religious language. It came to be so well known, and even the simplest member of the church, through its special use, has a response of praise, particularly in, in Easter worship. Hallelujah literally means praise God. It derived from halal, not the meat. <laughs> it derived from halal, uh, although no, not the meat. <laughs> not the meat. <laughs> not the meat. Right. Oh, no. You see, Thank they God. were nicking. They were nicking our words. Halal. You see. Uh -huh. You see. You see the doctrine being com confused. Halal. You know. Hallelujah. Hebrew came from the Hebrew, and it appears only here in the Bible. Did you believe that? In Revelations, right there at the end, because God is bringing it right to the end. Hallelujah. He's saving it. He's saving the best till last. Hallelujah. Jesus is coming. Hallelujah. I'm excited. It's it's actually one of the first phrases of Psalms. 106, 111, 112, 113, 117, 1135. And they were called the halal, the praise God. And they were part of the essential education of every Jewish um, lad. You can imagine. So uh, sometimes I look at the teaching of some of the, uh, the, the, the Jewish children. And I think they're blessed. I was in, um, I was in, uh, uh, um, um, oh, what was it called? Lake District the other day. And, uh, and 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 um, I was on one of those those go, go ape things or whatever they're called, you know them them skyliner things. Do you know what I mean? Gemma had me booked up on those things, and and anything I was going, I, I was saying, oh, I was like, oh Lord, help me! <laughs> I was like really crying out for Lord for the Lord's help. And these Jewish people were looking at me, right, and they were laughing. And there was a there was a there was a big crowd of them. And when I looked down at them, I looked down, I said, Hallelujah, Yeshua, Hamashek. And there was all even more clapping, even more. Hallelujah. So I thought, and, I, and what I thought about, do you know what I mean? I thought about the discipline of, of the Jews, you know what I mean? Because they have uh, got some discipline, these people. And I thought, I would have loved to have been schooled like them to, to a certain degree. Not the religiousness aspects of it, but when we look at the discipline and in the word and how, they, how they're brought up and, 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 and how they know God's word, you know, it, it, it's something that we need to learn in terms of how we are going to input into our children. You know, it's a really, really um, interesting factor because we have a responsibility as, as Christian believers to impart into our children. And, and to be fair, what is the best thing that we can impart into our children? The word of God. Ivor, can I quickly share something on that? Of course you can. Right said, it's a scripture. I don't know where it's from, though, but it says, All your children shall be taught by the Lord, and great shall be the peace of your children. Amen. All the children are taught by your Lord, and greater peace shall be the children of your children. Hallelujah. All glory to God. Hallelujah. Chloe, good to see you. Sister Chloe, how you doing? Sister Zoe, good to see you. Maxine Brand, Chris, good to see you. It's amazing, you know, all the children. Now, that means your grandchildren. That means those around you. That means the children in the church. That means the children. That, 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 that doesn't necessarily mean the children. Because if I've got brothers and sisters in Christ, you know, oh, I've got lots of cousins. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> I've got lots of um, um, big family, haven't I? Hallelujah. So we have an example, you know, in fellowship. And that's why fellowship is important, that we build up, stir up each other. We get the children, you know, playing together. Hallelujah. You know, my, 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 my children's birthday recently, they got blessed by so many um Christian brothers and sisters, you know, that they, they, they say, where's Mark? And they say, where's Tom? Where's 
Dick, where's Harry? Do you know what I mean? Because they get blessed. <laughs> Hallelujah. Isn't that wonderful? Isn't it? Our Christian brothers and sisters, uh, uh, we can just bless each other. Do you know, we're family, you know, and it's so important. You know, God is praised because of salvation. Let's have it right. That's why God is praised because he, he, Jesus come to save us, to save us. Hallelujah. Glory and power belongs to him, not to anybody else. And we see that these great attributes of God should be awoken. And it's our response in the heart of man. So, you know, if we got a problem praising, we need to really look at that. Seriously, all jokes aside, <laughs> you know, this there's no time to for self-consciousness in God. Let's have it right. You, 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 you know. God is raising us up. He's raising up an army, you know. And I look at those first 12 disciples. Jesus said, go and make disciples. That was his command. You know, when you look at those 12, you know, you look at how they just robed around in their Jesus creepers. They went to the ends of the earth. They didn't have no cars. They didn't have no jet planes. They weren't flying around in private jets, you know, going and doing ministry. They were just turning up, you know, turning up as humble. They weren't rolling around in loads of Rolexes and sharp suits and, and pinstripe shoes and all that to, to preach the word of God. They weren't commanding a fee, number one, right? They were going out doing the Lord's work. Jesus said, go and make disciples of all nations. So we have to use those 12 disciples as the benchmark still today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That the salvation of God should awaken the gratitude of man. Hallelujah. That the power of God is always exercised in the love of God. Hallelujah. And should therefore awaken us. That gratitude gives us a, a sense of trust. That these are the constitute elements of real praise. Our gratitude to God because of his grace and our love to God and also to our fellow human beings and also to those that are perishing the lost because how can we be a power of example how can we be the light if we're not demonstrating God's power through us because God has not given us a spirit of fear. He's given us a sound mind because we're now regenerated. We're not geared up. We ain't, we ain't carrying baggage. We're not being held back from our past. We're open and we're able to demonstrate what Christ has done and transformed our mind, our thinking in oh wow hallelujah all glory to god oh i'm excited about what god's going to do for all of you taking you from glory to glory that god is praised because he has exercised his just and true judgment on that great harlot that judgment is inseparable hallelujah that the moral law can no more be broken the law of gravity, it can only be illustrated. It is said that the judgment of God are true and just. And God alone is perfect in judgment for three reasons. First, he alone can see the innermost thoughts and desires of any man. There's nothing you can hide from God, number one. First of all, this is why he's got to be praised. He knows what's in your heart. He knows what's in your mind. He knows what you're thinking. He knows exactly what you want, when you want, when you need it. You don't even need to ask for it. He knows. Number one. So there's nothing you can hide from God. That's number one. Hallelujah. That's something to be praised, that he knows you. You, you know, so, you know, I can go to daddy and say, you know what, daddy? Hallelujah. Help me. Love me, caress me, deliver me. Oh, Amen. Isn't that just exciting? <laughs> Second, he alone has that purity we can, which can judge without pre prejudice. <laughs> he alone has the wisdom to find the right judgment and the power to apply it. That we see the great harlot is judged because why? She corrupted the world. 
The worst of all sins is to teach others to what? Can't hear anyone. The worst, thank you very much. The worst of all sin is to teach others to sin. Amen. Does that ring any bells around active addiction, folks? Just a little bit. Just a little bit. <laughs> Thank God we're not there today, eh? Praise God. He said, praise God. Meant to give God praise. Amen. Being afflicted by your own addiction. Being afflicted knowing that you're willfully doing something that you cannot stop doing. Powerless. They talk about it in our program. The powerlessness. And only God can release you from that. I know for me, when I got down on my hands and knees and asked God to come into my life and take this cup away, that cup of heroin and crack that I was using every day, heroin, crack, jink, and everything else. And I said, I can't go on no more. I was instantly healed from the obsession to use. Instantly. Not only was I instantly healed from the obsession to use, I had further instructions as to what to do next, was to go and see a man and seek some help. The next instruction was, you need to get back into recovery. You need to trust me. I know you've lost everything, but trust me, I will bring you back. Follow me. Pick up your cross and walk. I will lead you to the path of righteousness. It might not happen in one day. It might not happen in two days. It might not happen in three days, but just follow me. The Bible says, come to me, all those who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. There's nothing that's too much for the God that we serve. I don't care how much drugs you're using. I don't care how much heroin you, you've, you've used. I don't care what past you come from. I don't care what background you come from. There is nothing that is too much for our God. Nothing. And if you're sincerely, around wanting to have that cup taken away from you and you're obedient to the will of God, he will show you a way. He says, my sheep will hear my voice. Follow him. So we know that there is one other reason for the rejoicing, that the judgment of Rome is the guarantee that God never in the end abandons his own. It's all forbidden. All forbidden. All forbidden things we've sought, all the mischief we've wrought, all the sin to others taught. Forgive, O oh Lord, for our Jesus' sake. Let's say that together. All forbidden things we sought. All forbidden things we sought. All the mischief we have wrought. All the mischief we have wrought. All the sin to others taught. All the sin to others taught. Forgive, O Lord, for Jesus. Forgive, O Lord, for Jesus. Amen. Jesus. Amen. Father, we thank you. We know when we come to the marriage of the lamb that the event takes place in heaven after the judgment seat of christ for its place in the book of revelations that we would judge that it occurs towards the close of the great tribulation it's the time when the church the bride of christ is seen clothed in white linen bright and pure the remnant represents the righteous acts of the saints and the bride has already appeared before the judgment seat of Christ and has been rewarded for everything that was done for Christ's glory in obedience to his word. 
the angel announces the blessedness of all who are invited to the marriage supper, hallelujah, of the Lamb, that these guests are the saints of the Old Testament and the tribulation periods of the church, of the heavenly bride of Christ. Those who are invited are the rest of the redeemed in heaven. See, John falls down before the angel to worship him, but, but is forbidden to do so. He is told that God alone is to be worshipped, not the angel. This is where we see um, the, the right calling of, of, you know, where people worshipping angels before God. He says, don't worship to any angel. It's God alone that we worship. This is what he's saying. God alone is to be worshipped. The angel is a fellow servant of which John and his brothers hold the testimony of Jesus. Hallelujah. You hold the either. testimony of Jesus. Amen. Can I say something on that, please? Come in. I forgot to do my hand. Um, that's how we know Jesus is God. Because he allowed, just as one example, he allowed, is it Thomas the twin? That's right. To, um, fall down and say, my, um, I can't remember the first bit, my, is it my Lord, my God? And he fell down and worshipped him and he allowed that. Amen. So, if, you know, um, was it Ryan was saying about Jehovah Witnesses? I know they, they won't listen. I, I've tried witnessing to a few myself. Um, <laughs> Even just points like that, it's, it's just getting one of their cards to fall. And it, like, why are we worshipping Jesus in the Bible then if he's not God? Because only amen. God alone can be worshipped. Amen. Righteous acts are not religious deeds done by believers in order to be saved. Rather than they reflect the work of Christ to save us in order to do good works. We've been saved by grace to do good works there's nothing wrong with the works but you need to have the right order saved by grace by god to do his works what he's called and planned and commissioned each and every single one of to do because we you, you think about it saved by grace to produce good fruit look at the fruits of the spirit that's what we've been saved by to have self-control, to have love, to have patience, to be in that place where we have understanding. This is what God is transforming us into, into the likeness and his image. That's what it's about. You know, in you know, Christ inside of us is, is, is transforming us. Imagine that. Do you know what I mean? It's for people say, oh, Jesus is one most wonderful, most wonderful person to walk in this uh, on, on, on this earth. Well, he's transforming you into his likeness, into his image. Imagine that. That's what I call glory to glory. Because if you think about how wonderful and majestical that Jesus is, that he's transforming us into his image, into his likeness. And by our faith, we must believe that that's what's going on. Because if we don't, we got a problem. We got a serious problem, Ryan. Over to you. No, just go, hello, bro. Just going back to to, to Nadi, you know, um, saying you know the, the thing with Jehovah's Witnesses, they go by the they don't go by the covenant body. They go by they go by the organisation. You see, they 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 don't go with the word of God. That they believe in Jesus as He rose from the dead, but only the spirit. But then what happened to the body? Come on, you know, the body was resurrected. You know, He come out the tomb. You know, so you have to be careful with them because they don't go by the covenant body. They go by the organization that they follow. And without that organization, they haven't got a leg to stand on with us because the watchtower is not the word of God. It's just simply it's not. It's demonic. They go with an elder and a, a younger, though, don't they? And if you can just plant a seed in that younger one. Amen. Just collapse one of them cards for the younger ones that are not yet solid in their faith. Then that's, yes. that's my attitude to it anyway. No, I meant. I agree. Adam, Adam, it was in John, uh, John chapter 20, I believe it was, uh, that when Jesus met Thomas. It's in, I believe it's in John chapter 20, verses 20, around about, yeah, John chapter 20, 20 to 25, somewhere in, somewhere in that, when he, when, when he, when he links up and, and, he, and he shows him about the hands and the feet, and then he shows him about, you know, the, the marks in his hand. John chapter 20. That answers your question. Mm. Questions, query, time to come in, guys. What we got? <laughs> <laughs> Mark, what are you laughing at? What's going on for you? No, I'm good. 
<laughs> Bless you. <laughs> Neil? <laughs> Did you ah. from my hand up? <laughs> 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 All right, yeah. Um, yeah, uh, yes, just some things that are just coming to me right now. Um, uh, I'll try and relate it to, to what we've been talking about. But what's coming to me is that... Uh, what are the significance of Jesus in the Bible, in the Old Testament and in the New Testament? And going back to what Jehovah's, you know, mm. don't see the significance of Jesus. Now, the Passover, um, I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, please, but I believe it's, it was first mentioned in Exodus when the lamb was, when the people were told to, um, to coat the door with lamb's blood. That was the first, if it's Exodus, I may be wrong there, but that was the first, I believe that was the first kind of illustration of the significance of Jesus as the, uh, the to give, um, to, to allow that Passover to the peace, people who painted the doors. So that Jesus was the salvation in, in that scenario because the, 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 the boys, God was go going to kill all the firstborn. Um, so the, when the, when the, um, when the Jewish, I believe they painted their doors, the, the angel of death, if you like, um, passed over. Then now when I look, and then we have the Passover, which is the, the meal um, also, um, and then Jesus' final meal of the uh, the new covenant when he broke bread and the wine. And then finally, the uh, what, what I'm bringing this to is Revelations, where it, the Passover or Yahweh's Passover starts, um, the celebration of peace, um, uh, the future fulfillment of the book of the revelations our passover lamb occurs 24 times in the, in the book of revelations so i just wanted to try and bring that in to it somehow and I, 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 it just shows that the significance of jesus from the old testament to the new testament in revelations messianic prophecy absolutely absolutely beautiful anybody else feel free Can I just add to that? Sorry, I don't know how to... Oh, I think I found my hand up thing. Can I add to it? Yep. I've got you next, Steve. It links as well to the tabernacle, right? Because And this... So when I was talking to a Muslim lady, this is what I went to. So they believe in the Old Testament in Islam. Um, and if they, they believe in the Old Testament, they, they believe in the tabernacle. And if you look at the tabernacle, they had to be made clean before they could go into the holies of holies. So then we can link that to Jesus as well because they always say we don't need an intercede I don't need intercession but Jesus we need intercession to be made clean to get to heaven to get to God because he's holy he's the holy of holies Amen. So that links as well very powerful excellent beautiful Steve you're muted Yeah, there was just a, a a couple of things just with the comment just made there. Sorry, I don't know your name, that, that the female lady, but she just Nadia. said um, you're Nadia. So it's like um, for for me, once once um, I accept so, full salvation of Christ, I'm I'm made clean because I'm declared righteous. You know what I mean? So I am Amen. I am clean regardless. You know any past sins, present sins, future sins. That's not to say I abuse His grace and sin more. Uh, I certainly, I just look back at my life and I'm definitely sinning less than I've ever been. So just with regards to that. But, you know, there's been a lot of talk about, you know, uh, different denominations of churches. And, and I'll be honest with you, yeah, I've, I've studied just by pure, when I've been in prison, I've studied with the witnesses, yeah. Um, not for any great length of time. It was the only Bible study on offer. So I just engaged with them, you know. Um, and I, I, I've, I've studied with the Brethren community. And it's funny because, you know, there's there's, various different denominations i always the person that ever evangelized to me and i believe everything he ever said to me yeah not because he believed it is just it, it just sounded true just rang true and he said steve you can't cherry pick the parts of the bible you want to believe and not believe you either believe it's all there and god says that you know all his words there um it's through divine inspiration for teaching yeah. for doctrine for righteousness and all the rest of it yeah so that that rang true with me you know the guy that evangelized to me and there's various different denominations and they'll, they'll say this doesn't apply that doesn't apply you know and they, and they cherry pick the parts and it isn't just witnesses it, it is there's, there's other there's other denominations out there that, that do the self same thing and I've, I've, yeah. I've been in the company of a couple of different types and you know I've 
I, I, I can become a bit argumentative, but <laughs> at the end of the day, you know, um, the word of God's the word of God, you know what I mean? And and, it, and it's there for a very specific reason. And you either believe it or you just don't believe it. And that's just for, for me, you know, and we, we all read different books. You know, there's so many different variations of the word of God. And, and there's just happened to be one of them, you know. So for me, you know, <clears throat> I stick to the Bible that I first ever read it, that I, that that when Jesus came and circumcised my heart and I don't move away from this, I do look at other variations to see if it, the word can be unfolded even more for me to uh, accept that and, and, and get a better understanding of that, especially the Amplify. But, um, yeah, I, I, you know, I, I try not to argue with other people of other denominations, you know what I mean? I, I, I just let... The, the spirit work through me through truth you know what i mean and and, and i find that's just a, a better way to interact with people you know what i mean i agree with that that's beautiful and and somebody said to me which i heard one day when you get to heaven you might be very surprised yeah yeah <laughs> that's what somebody said to me one day and i just i had to sit down and really ponder on that one i thought wow do you know what i mean yeah but this is why this is why, and I like what you said, Steve. This is why we still need to be in a position where individually we're not being tossed and swayed by these other doctrines Doctrine. or yeah, not yeah. being swayed by what's not the truth. Yeah. It's funny you should say that, Ivor. I'll just I'll just come back with this. I was talking to another brother today, and it's funny because we were because talking was about talking. sorry. It, it was unmuted. Oh, sorry. Um, so, it, it, I mean, I don't believe in coincidences. It's just God instances. But I was just sharing that with another brother today. You know, I lost, I lost my identity in in Christ from a from a very young age. But I was a child then. I didn't know. Um, and and it's easy to see that uh, how people in the world have lose their identity and they go from this thing to this thing. And you know, the one thing that come up in a conversation today that if you don't stand for the truth, you will fall for anything. And that is so true in the world today. You know. Mm, that's really true particularly in a place where you you know like like you say there's so many different books there's so many different dominations we've got access now you know we, we've got access to to to, to 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 a wealth of information so it's important uh for each and every individual not just to take what you know the pastor says or the preacher says or what he says or what that denominator says. it's what god says to you mm. Yeah, that's really important. Yeah. It's what God says to you through the power of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Neil, over Amen. to you. Okay. Thank you, Ivor. I'll try and do this as quick as I can. So just two things to raise. Um, first one was what Nadia said off the back of that. So in the Quran, uh, Muhammad refers to Jesus. Jesus was a spirit, as, uh, or more correctly, a soul created by God, um, brought by Gabriel, a mighty angel of God, who breathed into Mary, we blew into her womb and so on and so forth. That's in the Quran. Now, now if we so Jesus is the breath. So what is the breath? If we look at John, in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and God and the word was God. So Jesus is the word. So that's the Quran um, element there. And then either what you were saying about the denominations and how important it is to just be in our own salvation as well, or to be in our own salvation, is if we look at Ephesians, Ephesians 4.4, 4, it says, that um, it says that there is one body and one spirit, just as you were called uh, to one hope when you were called one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God, one Father of all. So effectively, my understanding is that when Jesus comes back, there will be no denominations. There will be one church, one Amen. body in Christ. Amen. You. And, you know, guess what? A load of Muslims are going to be saved as well. Yep. Amen. <laughs> Amen, Gemma. Oh, it it doesn't it doesn't matter now. I I I always thought um I just had to Google it because I always thought that Jehovah Witnesses was like a whole different religion um and Mormonism. I thought that was a separate religion, but apparently they are classed as Christians, but they just don't believe in the Trinity. So. Yeah, I was just a bit confused, but I'm here now. I, I would say they are a different religion because they don't believe Jesus is who he says he is in the scriptures. And they've admitted some of the scriptures as well. And then yeah, they but apparently they class themselves as Christians, so that's what Google says, but I 
I we I don't I don't, I don't know. <laughs> I, I only found out today that Catholics are Christians. Yeah, I knew there was another one. Class themselves as Christians. They even knock on your door like a devil. I'm telling you. <laughs> I'm telling you that knock. They got a specific knock on that door. That's the wolf uh, on the door. I'm telling you, you know. Yeah. But the yeah. Trinity, going back to the Trinity, the Trinity's not really in the Bible. You see, no, in Deuteronomy right. six verse four, it says the word of God is a compound unity. Yeah. So that's why like Ivor and Gemma being married with two children, they become one. Just like Jesus said, me and my father are one. And that's something we need to get correct because the Catholics have made that word up in their in their denomination. So we have to we have to really go back to the Bible. It doesn't mention that. It says it's a it's a word, it's a compound unity. So we're all together, we're all one in Christ. Amen. 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 We're getting some of Chloe. How you doing? Yeah. Yeah, good. Thanks. Yeah, just interesting hearing everyone's, um, every every what everyone's saying about different dom denominations, because there's some um like the Christian Church work very closely to um the Catholic Church, and I kind of was um like praying on this and kind of like you know like is that right? Like it's kind of the same thing, but not really. But then I went as I um went to Spain we we went to this uh, cathedral and it's it's stuck in this museum and it starts off as Jesus and Jesus's story and it's so there's paintings and it's so moving and it's so um like you know when you see what Jesus went through and what the disciples were going through you could really just feel the Holy Spirit you know I was really um teared up but like, as I started walking through the museum it's like everything started to change like as history went on it's like they just started making their own religion but still trying to use Jesus's story mm. as kind of the foundation but it was so distorted because there was just the mother Mary being worshipped and then there's the saints being prayed to like that's not God we don't need to pray to saints. We don't need to worship Mary. And I'm sure if Mary was there, she'd be like, what are you doing? Don't don't look at me. Look at him. Indeed. Amen. Um, I think, there's, <laughs> oh, come I think on. there's like a huge thing of false doctrine. And it's very, um, and it's leading people down the wrong way. Um, and But I also think that there's, um, I, you know, we can't judge every individual in every church. Some people have their personal relationship um but the church as a whole it's not okay and it's not right and it's taking away the relationship to god like they're putting things in between god and um, you can see that um um that delusion in it um but reading le uh, paul's letters to the churches especially thessalonians there was such um, a rebuke to them you know he went he wrote a letter teach them about the coming of jesus about the second coming giving them um warnings about him coming and then they turned it into oh okay so he's coming any time now so we don't need to do anything we're just gonna not work so and then paul comes back with a second letter and he rebukes them but when he rebukes them before he rebukes them he like sends them their his love for them he makes sure that that foundation is set right is that he loves them he's he's for them he's praying for them and he always points out something that they're doing good he like makes sure that's clear as well and then he goes into like a rebuke but it's very loving and then he also finishes it off with God's truth about what God has planned for them um so I think there's like there's a, 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 a way to go about it that we really need to point people to Jesus and not denominations and a relationship with Jesus. Like even um, a, a lot of Christian denominations, especially I feel sometimes the Church of England, there's it's very political. Like we like to make it political and we like to get involved and we like to get in, in the way of Christ. So that's, I just think it's important to, if we have a chance to, um, of course, pray for for people that do not have the relationship with Christ, but also to um to if we can have an opportunity and um, gently rebuke people as well. 
In love. In love. Mm. There you go, Dick. Over to you, brother. Oh, Thanks, Avery. Yeah, um, I haven't been on here for a while, and I wasn't actually going to talk, but um, it has opened up a couple of things to me. Just on the Mary part of things from the from the Catholic uh, background, and, and I was a Catholic for the vast majority of my life. Um, in Luke 1, 46, you can clearly see, and, and they, this isn't preached, because I know it has never been preached to me. And it says a song of Mary, and Mary said, My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit has rejoiced in God, my Saviour. And just like Chloe said there, I don't, and I've never, ever, even in Catholicism, I have never, ever heard anything about Mary that she said, pray to me. Never have I heard that. So like, and Mary has never said it herself. In that prayer, she identifies clearly as God, as her Savior. And she went to Jesus, her son, for the, for the miracle of the water and wine. So she clearly knew who Jesus was. She knew who God was, Amen. you know. But but just just on the on the, <laughs> and I only heard this this morning. See, a lot of people, you know, follow religions, yeah. um, because it's how they were brought up. You know, that's that's a that's a good reason why somebody stays where they are. And I heard this this morning that a preacher was saying, he said his wife when she co cooks a roast, she always cuts both ends off. And he asked her, why do you cut both ends off? She says, because my mother did that. So he went to the mother-in-law and he said to the mother-in-law, why do you cut both ends off the roast every time you cook it? She says, because my mother did that. So he went to her mother and he said to her, why, why do you cut the both ends off the thing? She says, because it's the only way it would fit into the pan. And and that's that's the danger with the, the 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 people. We follow traditions. It's human nature to follow traditions, and not and that's why the word says, "Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling." You know, every one of us today has the facility of opening a Bible. Should it be an app or whatever? And it's the only way that we're gonna get this, because if we're not in the Word, we're in the world. And the only difference is one letter. But but in you know we identify Christianity with with churches. That's that's it's we identify God with churches. It's nothing to do with the churches. The churches is full of human beings, sinners. Every one a sinner. There's no sinner any better than any other sinner, you know. And it, what what we're moving away for, I believe, you know, in in the book of Acts, it says. Um, and they continued steadfastly in the doctrine, oh, sorry, in the apostles' doctrine and in fellowship, in the breaking of bread and in prayers. And then further down, so continuing daily with one accord in the temple and breaking bread from house to house, they ate their food with gladness and simplicity of heart, praising God and having favor with all these people. I don't know too many churches today, folks, that are doing this, because I believe we've all moved away from the doctrine of the apostles, you know, and it's clear to be seen that that's what's happened. And then people are wondering, how many churches do you know that even in the church, <laughs> they're of one accord? Oh, I don't like what she said, and I don't like what he said. That's what it is. We're, we're, we're not of one accord. And if I don't like what I hear here, I'll go down the road and I'll find another one that says, you know, that 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 suits me. You know, we're not following the doctrine of the apostles and fellowship. I believe this is just me. And I could look at uh, Jehovah Witnesses. You can look at one thing I'll say about Jehovah Witness. At least they're going out to preach what they believe to be right. Two by two. How many of us are doing? It? How many of us? I'm putting my hands up and telling you I'm not. And that's me being totally honest. And that's not what I'm asked to do. I'm, I'm asked to go out and make disciples of the whole world, not to make Christians, to make disciples. And that's it. And if, if I make another person or help to make another person a disciple, they'll make somebody disabled. Because what we have today is a lot of Christians and not many disciples. 
And, the, and you know, the word tells us not everyone who says, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven. So that's something that we have to be very, very careful about that. You know, Charles Spurgeon talks about presumption. We presume, you know, presume nothing. Mm -hmm. David Carson said, I will say I am saved the day I enter the kingdom of heaven. He says, no one will shout it louder than me. Because then he says, I know I am home. And I'll leave it at that, folks. Thanks for letting me share it. I'm sorry for taking it up. <laughs> Amen to that. And that's, Amen. Really, and that's really, you know, where the starting point is. Has to go back to the 12. Jesus said, go and make disciples. He didn't say go and make churches. What church? You know, the, as Chloe said, you know, we've really seen it. The, the, the church lukewarm you, you, you know we've seen what's going to come there's it's got a lot to answer for but why are we keeping our, our our eyes on the building and also the individuals we need to keep our eyes on ourselves pick up our own cross and yeah, amen and do what the word of god says in obedience instead of yeah. watching what other people do do you know what i mean the, 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 that, that's the truth of the matter this is the fault of the relationship between god and his people as a marriage goes far back as the old testament it says again and again the prophets thought of israel as the chosen pride of god that i will betroth you and me forever jose here's god say i will betroth you and me in righteousness your maker is your husband the lord of hosts is his name says isaiah jeremiah hears god says and appeals the return of the faithless children it tells you right there faithless children you know, no obedience. One foot in the world, one foot in, in, in there. We see it all the time. And the thing about it is, is that we need to stay on the narrow path. And the only way we can do that is by being in the word of God. You know, that's the relationship. It's there. You know, the key question here for any of us right now is how much time are we spending with God? That's the key question. Amen. That's the key question. Amen. Whether that's in your prayer life, whether that's in your word life, whether that's in your, your ministry, whether that's in whatever, you, whatever you're doing in your walk and what you're called to do, because God has given you all a plan and a purpose. You know, and it's important. It talks about the marriage symbolism runs all the way through the gospel. We read the marriage feast in Matthew, uh, the bride chamber, the wedding garment. Somebody mentioned that as well. The sons of the bride chamber, the bridegroom in Mark, the friends of the bridegroom in John. It goes all the way through. That's the theme. And that's the intimate communion. So intimate that man's wife becomes one flesh. The relationship of the Christian and Christ must be the closest in all of life hallelujah the christian and christ not the christian and church not the christian and your fellowship the christian and and christ hallelujah that there's a fidelity that no marriage can last without fidelity and the christian must be must be as faithful to jesus as to Jesus Christ is to him. So when you look at your faithfulness, right, your faithfulness must question your obedience to what you're doing in your Christian walk. And we know it's not works based. And that's where the Catholics are going on. If I do 10, 10 Hail Marys and 10 half hours, do you know what I mean? And I grew up in a Catholic church. And you know what? I don't regret it because it stood me in good stead till I could work out my own salvation with trembling and fear. To the point that, you know, even when my mum was on her deathbed, you know, she had the Catholic priest there. And, you, you know, and, and even when he was reading her last rites in front of her, I was with her reading her last rite. And the, I've got the recording there. He said, I've never seen anything like this before in my life. At 35 years, I've been doing this and I've never seen nothing like this before in my life. When we started praying in that tongue, she started going, oh. she couldn't talk and she couldn't breathe. And she couldn't do that. He said, I've never seen nothing like this in my life. 35 years I've been doing this. He was drunk as a sack, he was. 
It's absolutely the most mesmerizing experience I've ever felt. And the bottom line is this. <laughs> I knew what my mum believed, but I know she's sitting right there in heaven right there. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. So, the marriage must be faithful to Jesus as Jesus is faithful to us. Yeah. We look at those verses. The passage calls God by a certain name and says that he has entered into the kingdom. It calls God the Almighty. The word is the the, the pantocranker, literally the one who controls all things. The significant thing about the great word is that it occurs 10 times in the New Testament, once in the Old Testament. And when we see, when we see and we go back, we look at the follows the praise from the 24 elders and the four living creatures. The 24 elders were prominent because we saw that the 24 elders represent the 12 patriots and the 12 what? Disciples. Nations. No. Oh, there you go. There you go. That. Beautiful. Amen. Okay, guys, let's finish the last part. Who's going to read 11 right away to the end? Ryan, is that you? Ryan? I, I was coming in to speak on what Dick was there. That was all, man. You know, um... <laughs> coming in, coming in, brother. You know, I just wanted to say, like, you know, you know, following traditions of man, you know, um, I won't keep you long, brother, but, you know, when we get into that habit of, you know, I grew up as a, as a Catholic as well, and what Dick was saying is right, you know, people concentrate too much on, on and like you said, brother, Ivor, on the building and traditions of man, and, you know, your priest will tell you to go, keep coming back, you know, repent of your sin, but they don't understand that, you know, it's the sin that's the problem. You know, we can't, you know, it's all, got, it's all good to come back and forth and, you know, keep saying, oh, we are repent, but repent for what? You know, do we choose to stay in the sin? Because Jesus says, hate you. Jesus said, the Bible says, hate your sin. And Jesus said, sin no more. You know, we've all got sins in our life. Nobody's perfect. But if we don't hate our sin, how can we, how can we know what God wants for our lives? If we stay in that sin and we, we, you know, that, 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 that person in the, in the church is, you know, telling us that priest is telling us as drunk as a skunk, as you say, no, it's okay to sin. But come and repent every week. Pointless. And I just feel like we have to do our best to remove the sin in us because of, that sin is what's causing us to, to stumble every time, you know? Amen. So God, God bless you, brother. Bless. Jaron, is that you coming in to read? Go on, but fire away, brother. Oh, brilliant. Um, <laughs> Revelation 19 11, the rider on the white horse. I saw heaven standing open and there before me was a white horse whose rider is called Faithful and True. With justice, he judges and makes war. His eyes are like blazing fire and on his head are many crowns. He has a name written on him that no one knows but he himself. He is dressed in a robe dipped in blood and his name is the word of God. The armies of heaven were following him, riding on white and clean, uh, white and clean. Out of his mouth comes a sharp sword with which to strike down the nations. He will rule them with an iron scepter. He treads with wine breaths on the fury of the wrath of the God Almighty. On his robe and on his thigh he has the name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And I saw an angel standing in the sun who cried in a loud voice to all the birds flying in midair, Come gather together for the great supper of God, so that you may eat the flesh of kings, generals, and mighty men of horses and their riders, and of the flesh of all people, free and slave, small and great. I then saw beasts and the kings of the earth and their armies gathered together to make war against the rider and the horse and his army. But the beast was captured, and with him the false prophet who had performed the miraculous signs on his behalf. <clears throat> with these signs he had deluded those who had received the mark of the beast and worshipped his image. The two of them were thrown alive into the fiery lake of burning sulphur. The rest of them were killed with the sword that came out of the mouth of the rider on the horse. And all the birds gorged themselves on the flesh. On their flesh. Amen. 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 
the conquering Christ, hallelujah, that's the God we serve. The most dramatic moments in Revelation, the emergence of the conquering Christ on the great white horse. What a picture that must look like. Wow. John sees Christ as the conqueror. I mean, who do you see Christ as? Seriously, ask yourself the question. Who do you see Christ as? I mean, this is who John sees Christ. He's the conqueror. He's the, he's the man. He's the, he's the one. He's the governor. You know, <laughs> it's, a quick, it's a good question to ask yourself, isn't it? Who do you see Christ as? Your friend? Your foe? Your deliverer? You know, we're Christians. <laughs> These are questions, you know, you really have to kind of like look at and kind of like really come and like really fall. Like Christ the Saviour, you know, the, the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. You know, when we're looking at uh, the witnessing and the spirit of prophecy, it's about, you know, what is intended, you know, is to accept that the words that we're speaking is truth. You know, that Jesus is Lord of Lords, King of Kings. When you're ministering that to somebody else, is that your truth in your heart? You know, he's above King Charles and all the kings of the universe. If you go and tell that to people out there, go and witness that to somebody out there and be truth in your heart and know that you can stand on that truth, that I am an ambassador of the King of Kings. The Lord of Lords. That's who I am. That's who my right, my birthright stands in the name of Jesus. To proclaim that and profess that with faith to other believers, they think you're crazy. But the truth is, that's what we should be proclaiming. That's when God has ministered to you who he is and revealed himself to you that you can tell people who he is. And stand on that truth and that belief. And it doesn't matter who you're ministering to, because God, the Bible tells you we will preach the God to nations, kings. It doesn't matter. Do you know what I mean? We'll stand out there, you know, in victory, not in fear, in power, because we're standing on the truth. And that's why we need to be in the word, to stand on the truth. It doesn't matter where it is, to be able to stand in that place behold O lord raise up to them the king the son of david hallelujah at a time in which thou hast seen god that he may reign over israel and gird him with strength that he may shatter unrighteous rulers we're seeing things by rulers of this dark world now we're seeing lots of stuff that he's going to come to 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 take the throne of all these King of Kings, Lord of Lords, who think they're King of Kings, Lord and Lords, unrighteous rulers of this dark age. Dick, come in. Did I see your hand there, Jonathan? Go up and down before I bring Dick in. Uh, yeah, you, you, you did. I mean, I was just going to answer your question about who, who I see Jesus as. Um, this is only my second meeting. Hi, hi, hi everyone. And uh, I'm, I think, think I'm, I'm a bit Bit, a bit further behind um, uh, my brothers and sisters on this call, but uh, yeah, I, I see Jesus. I, oh, I'm starting to see Jesus as my, my savior, and I've been calling out to him a lot the last week. And I went for a walk, um, I was working today, and I went for a walk um, in the woods at, at, at lunchtime, and I, I was calling out to Jesus, and and then then he was he was walking next to me and, and I, I haven't really experienced that before and it was uh yeah i mean i mean praise god yeah he's he's he, he's my savior yeah that's 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 what i wanted to say beautiful he's my savior confess that with your mouth that's powerful you know uh -huh. i put a question out as a man said i want to i want i want i want to confess who jesus is right here declared recording going out well done. Well done, you, that man. Hallelujah. That's who he is. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Dick, over to you, brother. Yeah, that proves how far you are behind, Jonathan. You're not behind. Amen. <laughs> Let me assure you, if you can declare that, you're nowhere behind anybody here. 
Amen. Just just one thing, Ava, and you talked about it just before, just before the last thing you said, it was um we don't wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities and against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this age. It says in verse 15 there, now out of his mouth goes a sharp sword that with it he should strike the nations. And what does it say in the same passage in Ephesians 6? And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. That's the thing that will come out of his mouth. Yeah, that sword will be the word of God that will chop us down because we haven't been able to do what the word's been telling us to do. So there's the sword, the very thing that 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 we have to save us against the fairy darts of the wicked one is the word of God, the sword of the spirit, that very same sword that, that'll slake the nations. Thanks, Ava. That's powerful. Yeah, it's so powerful. You look at that. He clothed in the robe, dipped in blood by the name which he is called the word of God. That's the name he's called. He's called the word of God. He ain't called the word of Christians. He ain't called the word of Jehovah Witness. He ain't called the word of Church of England. He ain't called the word of Catholics. He ain't called the word. He's called the word of God. That's what he's coming. Right? He, he, he brings it down into one form there. Bang. The word of God. Now, some may misinterpret that. And that is why the Bible says we need to work out our salvation with trembling fear through the power of the Holy Spirit, because no man can give it to you, you know, through your relationship with Christ, that God will reveal the truth to you. Hallelujah. And we see this here that he says that there are two further pictures of the warrior of Christ. He's clothed with the robe in blood, not his own, but of his enemies. It's, it's gone past the uh, the New Testament. <laughs> it, it, ain't, it ain't Jesus on the cross. Let me tell you that right now. The blood that he's clothed in right now is not the Jesus on the cross blood. Hallelujah. It's with the blood of his enemies. Charles Spurgeon puts it in that he says it's essential to remember that the heavenly leader is this time not the slain one but the slayer as usual john takes his picture from the old testament and he's thinking of the terrible picture in isaiah 63 where the prophet pictures god returning from that destruction of eden he says i have stained all my i have stained all my raiment this is the messiah of jewish opaletic expectations far more than the messiah who jesus claimed to be his name is the word of god although the words are the same in the first chapter and the fourth gospel the meaning is quite different and much similar here we have the purely jewish idea of the word of god to a jew a word was not merely a sound it did things as dr john patterson puts it the book that is alive the spoken word is hebrew and when we get to hebrew it says hebrews 4 12 here is the idea that the word of god is living and active sharper than any double two-edged sword here we see john calling the warrior christ the word of god he means here in action is the all power of god's word everything that god has said in the book in the bible everything that he said in the book Living and active. It's living and active right here, right now. That's what we're picking up right now. Living and active. Breathe, God breathed into our spirits, into our souls, into our minds. Hallelujah. We see this in this passage here that he says that the word God, he means there is the action is all power of God's word. Everything that God has said and threatened and promised is embodied in Christ. We see this in this patch. Nadia, over to you. I just wanted to go back to, um, well, it links into what you've just said, to be honest, too, where Jesus was in the wilderness and Satan was tempting him. Mm. And this shows, like, so Satan came and he used scripture. So just because someone knows scripture, it doesn't mean that they know Jesus. Amen. He twisted it. He twisted the meaning of the scripture. So what did Jesus do? Because he is the word of God. He brought that scripture back and he gave it its true context, its true meaning and used it correctly. So I just think as believers, we need to make sure we're in the word and understanding not only the word, but the context behind the word. Amen. That's powerful. 
even Satan knows a scripture. Even um, um, what's those um, the, the, those people? Um, oh. Pharisees. F Pharisees, they know the word. Um, what's that? There's another. There's, there's another lot. The ones that um, yeah. in the courts. What they call them, Gemma? Sadducees. Sadducees, yeah. So, uh, um, and then, oh, the they're, Israelites. They're, they're a cult. What? Who? Oh, what's that? Um, 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 Neil's, Neil's lot. Oh, the um, Freemasons. Freemasons even use the Bible and cross out Jesus. Yes, they do. Right. Yeah. They know the that's word of God. That's another story for another day. <laughs> right. You know what I mean? So you got you you're seeing the word of God being used in all sorts of contexts, yeah. right? In in different different shapes and form. Quite so you, so, oh, oh. You know, well, even from me from being in the new age, they will steal god's word and twist it to mean whatever they'll cherry pick the bits that they want to use and anything that is going to make them uncomfortable they will discard that but they'll take the bits that make them feel nice amen and on his robe and on his thigh he has a name written what is what's the name that's written before before i come and let you come in Gemma. King of kings, King of kings Lord, of Lord of lords, on his name. Go, go, Gemma. <laughs> yes, it, it is. It is crazy. Everyone wants to bring scripture in. Like I got in an argument or a debate with a witch like last week, and she was trying to say that. There's no scriptures about witchcraft in the Bible, but there's loads about judging people. And I was like, really? I was like, there's so many. And when I started typing them all out to her, like the whole post like got taken down and removed. And then like, this is how like mad it is. Cause then she made a video about me and like has now posted it on Facebook and on TikTok, like, and I found like she's found my TikTok, and it's just like everyone wants to use the word of God. They want his it's power, just but crazy. Without... It's just so crazy. I just don't understand. Unbelievable. Amen. You've got to be careful out there. You've got to be really careful. You've got to know, you know, and you've got to be ready. Because the spirit behind it, the spirit is the spirit behind the spirit. Let's have it right. The spirit behind the spirit knows. Oh, can and I can I just add that she Sorry, on, she no. was a she I didn't call her a witch. I personally didn't call her a witch. She's a self proclaimed witch, so that's what she calls herself. So yeah. Come in, Nadia. Let's make a point on that. So um there's two spirits at work, right? One's a holy spirit, one's a false spirit that's going to imitate everything and twist it, invert it. So the holy spirit is going to lead us to God's word. It's going to lead us to holiness. It's going to lead us to deny ourselves, as you say, pick up our cross, deny yourself. Mm. The false spirit is going to take you to yourself, focusing on yourself as God, take you away from God's word and make it all about your feelings. I just think it's really important to realise that there's mm. these two spirits at play. Amen. It's all about, and that's why we got we can't get too emotional. Yeah. You know, we can't get too emotional. But there is good news, eh? There is lots of good news. There is lots of good news in this in this chapter. Hallelujah. That the enemy the doom of enemies of Christ, that we see, we see that a grim picture of birds of prey being invited to come from all over the sky to glut themselves on the corpse of the slain. Again, this is the picture taken directly from the Old Testament. From ah is equals picture of the slaughter of the forces of who? Gog and Magog. What did we see in um, the coronation? We saw two pictures walking along 
with Gog and Magog. Right. That was a Freemason field day. Right, we see it right there, right, right. So, woo, woo, woo. Speaking of birds of every, speaking of birds of every sort, to all beasts of the field, you shall eat flesh of the mighty and drink blood of the princes of the earth, the rams of lambs and the goats of bulls, and you shall eat fat till you are filled and drink blood till you are drunk. The sacrificial feast which we are preparing for you. Ezekiel 39, 17 to 9, that the bloodthirsty picture is again so far in line with Old Testament apocalyptic expectations than the gospel of Jesus Christ. But here we have a reputation of the imagery of chapter 13, that the beast of Nero, the false prophet, is the provincial organisation which administered Caesar's worship, those who have the mark of the beast and those who have worshipped at the shrine of Caesar, the kings of the earth and their armies are those partisan hosts which Nero was to lead again. Come in, Ryan. You know, what I think that John was explaining in context to what he was saying about Christ, in my opinion, that it was God's perfect revelation in the flesh. That's it. He was it, that that is as far as, I, as as what I say, and that's what I say when I'm out evangelizing. That he was God's perfect revelation in the flesh. You know, there's no there's no one above him. You know, um, he 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 was God in the flesh, as we all know. No one could do the miracles that he done. Doesn't matter. You know, who who could do them? You know. So yes, he was God's perfect revelation, and that's what touched my heart originally, because I didn't know who I was in Christ at first. But when I really come to know who Jesus was, that's what got my heart set on fire for God, you know? Amen. Bless you. He's accompanied by the armies of heaven, dressed in fine linen, riding yeah. white horses. These armies are no doubt made up of saints and they are not required to fight. The Lord Jesus defeats his foes unaided. He doesn't need anyone. From his mouth, he issues a sword. The text explains that this is used to smite the nation. He comes to rule with a rod of iron. Hallelujah. That the great supper of God, the name given to the destruction of God's foes, the vultures are invited to feed on the carcass of those who are slain by the Lord. Hallelujah. All the rest of the rebels are slain by the sword of the Lord and the birds come to feast on their bodies. This brings a... a an end to the great tribulation father in the name of jesus we thank you lord as we just give you glory honor and praise for who you are king of kings lord of lords we thank you lord that we can honor you as we just lift your name up high as we come before you tonight we see your glory we come with an expectance to praise you. The Psalms of Solomon, verse 17 to 23 to 27 says, he says, Behold, O Lord, and raise up to him the king, the son of David, at the time of which thou seest, O God, that he may reign over Israel thy servant, and gird him with strength, that he may shatter unrighteous rulers and that he may purge jerusalem from nations that trample her down to destruction wisely righteously he shall thrust out sinners from their inheritance and he shall destroy the pride of the sinner as the potter's vessel and with a rod of iron he shall break in pieces all their substances he shall destroy the godless nations with the word of his mouth and at his rebuke nations shall flee before him and he shall reprove sinners for the thoughts of their hearts amen father we thank you that you are truth that we stand on your truth and Lord, I pray that you continue to help each and every single one of us to continue work out our own salvation in our relationship with you, with trembling and fear, that we shall fear you. Hallelujah. That we shall go in love, the love that you've implanted in us. Lord, in the name of Jesus, 
We thank you for who you are. We give you all the glory and all the praise. Continue moving us, each and every single one of us, from glory to glory, through Christ Jesus, through the power of the Holy Spirit. Continue to sanctify us and renew us in our minds and our hearts. Continue to develop us and equip us, Lord. Let us stay loyal to you. Hallelujah. Let us not stray in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. That you know our hearts and our minds continue to sanctify each and every single one of us as we go and serve you till you come again. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. Oh, Amen. what an interesting study. Amen. Today. I want to thank every single one of you guys for your contribution and uh, just for being here. I think it was very, very interesting. We shall be back next week with verse 20, uh, chapter 20. So feel free to, you know, ask the Holy Spirit to kind of like guide you in any truth that you may know. And feel free to check out any uh, things that we've said tonight and go deeper, you know, and uh, maybe something that um, has come up that you might want to look at and you know, continue, you know, continue, 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 continue. Hallelujah. And if there's something you don't understand, ask the Holy Spirit to guide you and lead you. May God bless you and may God keep you.